everybody, it's me Carmine DiStefano, the Bookman. Ah, and I'm back from the movie theater, seeing Spider-Man Homecoming. And before I get into it, I usually talk about the trailers. So I want to talk about the trailers that we saw before. And we did see Black Panther, and I think that's going to be one of the better obscure hero movies that Marvel makes. Because the Marvel Cinematic Universe, look, DC fans, I'm sorry. Your movies suck balls. The Marvel ones are usually pretty good. At least pretty good. And sometimes you have Marvels, no pun intended, like Guardians of the Galaxy, which is just amazing. But usually they're pretty good. And Black Panther looks like it's going to be really good. They also had the Kingsman one and that Stephen King one, Dark Tower, which I know about that from reading a couple of his books. It was a series of books, I think. But... They had those, they had the Jumanji movie, you know, it, like, there was really nothing going on. And of course, Pitch Perfect 3, I was like, what happened to the second one, you know, whatever. Nothing really major going on. The only thing I'm really looking forward to this year is Thor, Ragnarok. That looks just incredible. But, like, the ECW character. Now, the movie itself, I thought was pretty good. I didn't think it was great. I didn't think it was spectacular or amazing, or even ultimate. I think it was pretty good. Upon saying that, I'm a big Spider-Man fan. My incredibly awesome friend Frankie Love, who's probably going to watch this review, and I know is dying to call me, is a bigger Spider-Man fan. And I could name at least five things with this movie that made him hit the fucking roof. I know, I just know. I'm not going to really spoil anything for anybody. I'm not going to say anything. Really, I'm not. But there was a reveal towards the end of the movie that if some of these other things that they had in this movie didn't make him go through the roof, that one did. And Frankie Love, if you're watching this, I know you're going to call me. It's going to be the first thing you say. I'm just betting on it. I'm just betting on it. But be that as it may, yes, his friend... Ned, who's the name of one of the Hobgoblins, is like his sidekick and knows about it. Something else happened that I know Frankie Love is probably screaming about. I, I think my friend Frankie Love despised this movie. If not hated it, I think he didn't like it. But be that as it may, I thought it was pretty good. Considering it's out right now, I would suggest seeing it. They did get Toom's backstory right per se, in terms of what he did, but they never really announced that he was the Vulture. And on top of that, I don't think they gave him enough time. That was the biggest issue I had with this movie. They didn't give the Vulture enough time. They were so busy talking about Spider-Man trying to impress Tony Stark and all this stuff that they didn't really get into the Vulture. Now, they did leave things open. They did introduce characters that are going to be villains in the future. They did. Including one that I am very interested in because they've never done it before on big screen in any facet. And he's a big, big nemesis of Spider-Man. But if you see the movie, you should know. If you see the movie and you don't know, smack yourself in the face. Frankie Love knows what I'm talking about because we talked about it before. But Aunt May... Even though Marissa Tomei is a lot younger than Aunt May needs to be, she, uh, she, either she's getting way too skinny or she's aging faster, but she looks like she's getting a little old. But whatever the case, they still kind of reference her like she's hot, but which is not what Aunt May was, but whatever. Um, like I said, they got sort of the backstory of Tombs right, and I just wish they had more of him. Because Michael Keaton, in the 30 minutes he was in it, is amazing. He's fucking amazing. And I just want to see more of him. And I really think that's my only complaint with this movie, is that there were some action scenes. The final scene is very innovative in some form or another. And they did harp on the idea that he was stealing technology and selling it. But I just wanted to see more Vulture and Spider-Man. That's what I wanted to see. It's, they kind of had, like... Two battles with one another, maybe three. One he didn't even know he was there. The other one was more like Spider-Man fighting with his weapon, and then the last one came about, and it was 
it just seemed like something that they revealed involving Vulture, and Vulture himself was kind of rushed. So, if they could have put more Vulture in, I would have liked it better. But like I said, there are some things in this movie, some things that they've changed from the comic book that I didn't really prefer. And Frankie Love, I'm sure, skyrocketed through the, through the roof. I'm sure he did. I'm surprised I didn't see like a nuclear explosion from where I sat. But other than that, like I said, seeing what's out right now, I would suggest seeing it. It's pretty good. If you're not a huge Spider-Man buff like Frankie Love and I, you probably wouldn't even be annoyed by what annoys us. But be that as it may, not bad on a scale of, you know, Thor Dark World Iron Man 2 and, Iron Man 2 and 3, which somebody that watches my videos likes, that's fine. But on that, a scale from that to Guardians of the Galaxy, which is like a scale from 1 to 10 in Marvel movies, I would place this at about a, you know, a little bit better than the first Captain America, not as good as the first Iron Man, somewhere in between there. So, you know, better than Incredible Hulk, that's for sure. So, thank you all for watching. I have more for you soon to come. So stay tuned, take care, and have a great day.